One of the things that a hacker does when targeting a new computer is exploring the open attack surface. Now in many cases, that means checking to see what ports are open, what services are running and are externally accessible. Say they fire up Nmap, the command line network mapping utility, and see what they could further investigate or continue their reconnaissance. Now playing along with our cyber deception theme and saga these days, what if we did something weird? What if we had every single port open on the box so that it looked like every Everything was accessible and the hackers didn't know where to go or where to focus. So I am inside of my Windows 10 virtual machine and I want to show you exactly that idea. I'm going to fire up my web browser and I'm going to head over to GitHub because these are the free and openly accessible labs, activities and exercises that come from some of the anti-siphon pay what you can training. Specifically, this lesson is from their active defense and cyber deception course, which is on demand and you can get whatever you want, whenever you want it, at whatever price you want. If I may, just for a super quick second, these are some of the incredible things that come from anti-siphon training and Black Hills Information Security and all of the incredible folks behind a lot of John Strand's tribe of companies. And you can actually check it out on antisiphontraining.com or the link below. They do have their pay what you can training where you can dive into all of these awesome and incredible courses, one of which being active defense and cyber deception. Their active defense and cyber deception course is crazy cool. It goes over so many incredible tricks and all to help you as defenders better your security posture by wasting the threat hacker's time. You're having the hacker just get angry and upset because they can't figure out what to be doing in the environment and you as defender have more time to be able to respond, react, remediate, and recover. Anyway, let's get back to port spoof because I think it is one awesome example of cyber deception and one really cool tool to have in your toolkit because it's exactly everything that we've been discussing. It's forcing every single port to be open. All 65,535 open ports that will make an attacker's tooling like Nmap take forever, a huge amount of time, and they think, oh, they're going to have to manually interrogate all 65,535 ports. By the way, this virtual machine that I'm using is freely accessible from the pay what you can training, so I can fire up a terminal, and this has already been configured nice and easy to have not only Windows 10, but also an Ubuntu or Linux virtual machine running with the Windows subsystem for Linux. So we can go ahead and open up Ubuntu. I'll move into my home directory directory there with just the CD command, and we know that the port spoof utility is already in our path, because we can see the install location from that GitHub article. It is just simply something we can run with the name port spoof. Now I'll pass in TAC H to see the help options and check it out. It is a service emulator or front end exploitation framework. So here's the gist. Port spoof runs on a single port. It listens, it just like acts singularly on one individual port. By default, that's quad four. So in order to fool a port scan, like with Nmap, we have to allow port spoof to listen on every single port. So the way that we do that is to have actually all of the ports be bended according to our firewall to actually redirect every packet or every network data piece of traffic to quad four, where port spoof is listening. So the way that we can do that is just simply acting as the root user and then using IP tables, the command line utility to manage our Linux firewall to set up some pre-routing rules with TCP connections on any destination port, redirecting it to port quad four. So let me get back to my terminal. I will sudo su and I can just enter ADHD as the password here as that is the user. And I will go ahead and paste in that IP tables port option, and there we go. Now every single port should redirect to quad four. In fact, let's kind of test that out. Let me see my current IP address. Because this is a virtual machine within the virtual machine that is ADHD in the Windows 10 box, we kind of have to work with this inside of the Windows virtual machine that we're already in. So it's weird, I know, hey, maybe we're running Nmap from Windows, but let's take a look at our Linux IP address, 172.26.36.254, and let's get back to our Windows PowerShell prompt, where we we are able to run nmap from here. Now that I'm in Windows, I want to nmap on that port. And remember, every single port is being redirected to quad four right now. So naturally, it looks like everything is closed. Because there's nothing running on port 444 to begin with, now that the firewall is redirecting every single packet to that port, it looks like every port is closed, but we can now use port spoof to make it look like every single port is open. So let's get back to our Ubuntu machine. Let's get back to the Linux side and let me just run port spoof. How about that? No parameters, switching to a simple open port mode. 
Ooh, okay, so let's get back to our Windows side yet again. Now I can run this very same command, I'll just hit the up arrow and I'll fire off Nmap on the Linux IP address. <laughs> oh, that's so wild. <laughs> That's so crazy. Everything is open. Now note, Nmap is going through like the top a thousand most common ports. Uh, so that's why we kind of see a couple jumps, a couple of these. We skip from 10,005 all the way to 10,009 here. And Nmap just thinks literally everything is open. Now this is all fine and good, but it's not giving Nmap a whole lot to chew on. You know what I mean? Like, sure, it's cool that, oh, we can open up every single port, but you could do the very, very same thing with like Netcat. Just set up a Netcat listener, LNVP, quad four, and then because everything is redirected to that port, it will look like everything is open if you pass in the TAC K to keep the connections alive. And you could actually see that, by the way, like if I were to run Nmap one more time, like, and then actually specify, hey, use default scripts, search for versions, blah, 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 then you'd actually see uh, after a little bit of time, granted it's going to do a lot more interrogation, so this would take significantly longer, we can limit the port to like 10 or whatever. Let me cancel that and just run TAC P 10. How about that? Now, Nmap will say TCP wrapped, but it was sort of wondering what all those services were previously. If I were to actually like make a range here from one to 10, oh, sorry, that should be a hyphen, not two dots. Your port specifications are illegal. Oh, I'm going to jail. <laughs> See, the thing is, every single one of these would look like TCP wrapped, and that is a little bit of a telltale sign, right? You can tell something is amiss if you see that as an option. So we can up the ante by actually telling port spoof to look like every single real service. If you give port spoof some of its own signatures, then it will look like it's hosting FTP or HTTP or DNS or Kerberos. Could be anything, right? And this is cool. Let me hop over to the official port spoof repository from Dr. Kiwi, I think. And they actually showcase, look, we are built with a ton of different signatures to actually be able to generate fake banners or make it look like anything you want. Port Spoof will respond to every service probe with a valid service signature that's dynamically generated based on a service signature regular expression database. As a result, the attacker won't be able to determine what port numbers your system is actually using. So the lab activity showcases this with TAC S and we can go ahead and copy that. We'll have the path to the Port Spoof signatures just as well. And let's get back to our Ubuntu Linux side. Let's hit control C to stop port spoof. And then let's try to run port spoof one more time, but with those signatures pasted in so that it will be able to respond with real service looking like results, right? Now, if I use TAC P, uh, SC, TAC SV on ports one to 10, obviously these are not going to look like TCP wrapped anymore, but we're going to get a significant amount of results and it might take some time so much so that trying to beat up all 65,535 points would take even longer. This is the coolest part, and this is port spoof in action. If I were to remove, oh, that tack P1 to 10 and just let it loose on the most common 1,000 ports, it'll still take forever. All right, here we go. We got some results back. Looks like an HTTP sort of uh, service fingerprint here. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, right on port 10, port 9, port 8, port 7. They've all got stuff here that's just overwhelming and it would probably freak out a actual threat actor. Like if you were playing hack the box or try hack me and you got this every single port open as part of your little reconnaissance, man, I don't know how you'd react. <laughs> So here we go. I ran it with no port specified. It'll just try to go after the most common 1000 ports. And this will take, I don't even know how long. It takes more than eight hours and 200 megabytes of sent data in order to properly go through the reconnaissance phase with TAC P TAC. So every single port. All ports are still reported as open, but now Nmap will report a unique service on each port that will either lead an attacker down a rabbit hole investigating each and every port while wasting their time, or the attacker may just discard the results as false positives and ignore the machine altogether, leaving any real or legitimate service kind of masked. Like, hey, you couldn't tell what other actual services you were running because it looks like everything is on. They just get overwhelmed and they bail out. And I'm still going. I don't know how long this is gonna take. <laughs> But that is port spoof at its core, and I just think it's kind of neat. I think it's like, hey man, yeah, let's fake everything, smoke and mirrors, doesn't have any clue where everything is because it looks like everything is on and open and enabled, and the attacker just has to be a little bit paralyzed there. That is some cyber deception, and that is some of the sweet stuff you can learn with some of the Black Hills Information Security, Anti-Siphon Training, all the great tribal companies that John Strain is up to, and their pay-what-you-can training. If you're interested, link in the video description below, and I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope they thought that 
that was kind of fun, kind of cool, and maybe you have some great ideas for some service just like this, or you learned a new technique to funnel every single firewall port to one specific port. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.